Welcome, we are finally going to talk about the hydraulic lift and more specifically hydraulic systems as well as how Pascal's principles are really the underlying principle behind these hydraulic systems such as this hydraulic lift. So here we have, I've just very quickly drawn a piston system. So you have a piston on the left, a piston on the right, and you can see that the piston the piston on the right is obviously much bigger in surface area. And inside of this system, we have this liquid that has a constant mass density. So this fluid here has a rho, this mass density, and this mass density is constant. And that means that the fluid contained inside of this system is incompressible. So the concept of hydraulics is when we can use pressurized systems to do work and the underlying factor that's powering that work is Pascal's principle. So let's say we had a car and the car was sitting here on piston two. So this is gonna be my very poorly drawn cars. It has two windows. I'm sitting inside and I'm happy. Now this car is obviously going to apply some sort of force going down on piston two. So I'm gonna represent that by a vector here. This I'll just call force two, and that's being applied down into the liquid. Now, on the other side of the system, so on piston one here, we actually have a balancing force F1. I'll just call F1. And this force is being applied down into the system. And it's using this liquid, this hydraulic system, to counteract the force of this very big object F2. Now this works because, while well, the fluid is, again, it's incompressible, but this piston here on the left is smaller in area and we can use Pascal's principle to apply a very big force here on piston two to hold up the car. Now remember, Pascal's principle is if you increase pressure at one point in the system, then that pressure increases transmitted through all parts of the system. So on piston one, we have this F1 force here that is applying some sort of pressure here at this point. And because this is a hydraulic system and this state is in hydrostatic equilibrium with an incompressible fluid, then this pressure is going to be transmitted to all parts of the fluid, including the fluid that's acting on piston two. So that pressure is going to apply against this big area for piston two, and that's gonna result in a much larger force than F1, but it's gonna be a force that we can use to counteract F2. We're also gonna get into the term, which is force, multiplication factor. Now, this term is pretty important in hydraulic systems, especially hydraulic lifts, and the kind of very basic definition of this multiplication factor is that we can use two different areas of these pistons, and the ratio between these areas is what we call the force multiplication factor. So what it does is that ratio between these two areas will amplify force one on the second piston to counteract F2. We'll get into that in a little bit, but as I said before, when we applied F1 to this hydraulic system on piston one, that produced some sort of a pressure right here. Now, if I go ahead and I draw a line right where that pressure was induced by force one, so I'm talking about this line here, well, what do we know about systems or fluids in hydrostatic equilibrium? We know that if they're incompressible, which is the mass density is constant, then the pressure along this line is going to be the same for all points in that liquid along that line. Now you can see that piston two, the piston on the right side, is some height above that line that we drew. So I'm gonna call this line H. So this is just a height of H. Now, this entire system is in static equilibrium, so we've applied some sort of force one to piston one, and that's resulting in some sort of resultant force here on the bottom side of piston two, which is counteracting F2, so the car is not moving up or down, but we've applied some sort of force that's keeping car, the car on piston two from 
going up and down. Now, how can we figure out what this counteracting force is on the bottom of piston two, or in other words, the force required to balance out F2 based off of what we know about hydraulic systems, fluids in hydrostatic equilibrium, and just the concept of pressures along horizontal lines. Well, what if we did this? What if we figured out a way to get F2 in terms of the areas of the pistons as well as the force one being applied on piston one? And if we do that, that's gonna actually explain what this force multiplication factor is in hydraulic systems. So why don't we go ahead and try to do that? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label two points along this purple line here. And on piston one, right where we're applying F1, there's gonna be a, a pressure induced at that point, right? And I'll just call that P1. Now, along the same horizontal line over in piston two, I'm gonna draw another point, and this is gonna be P2. Now, because I've drawn these two pressure points along that same line, I know that P1 is going to equal P2, but how can we use this concept to actually figure out what F2 is? Well, I think a good place to start is actually calculating what P1 and P2 are based off of the forces being applied to the system. To start off here on P1 over on the left side, P1 is going to be equal to some sort of P0, so whatever P0 is being applied at the piston on the left, plus rho g d plus the pressure caused by F1 acting on piston one. So that's just gonna be F1 over A1, and A1 is just the area of the piston. Now, there's a couple things to note. This rho g d term is, well, d is always the distance from P0 down to the point that we're studying. And since P1 and P0 are at the same point, our d is gonna be equal to zero. So this term is actually gonna to go to zero. So what we're really left with is just P0, whatever external pressure is being applied to piston one, plus the force over the area caused by this force right here. So I'll just go ahead and rewrite that. It'll be P0 plus F1 over A1. Well, what about pressure two here on the right side? So pressure two is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna have some sort of P naught being applied to the piston two plus rho G D plus F2 over A2, right? The pressure being applied by this force right here. Now, a couple things to note here. The first one is P naught. P naught again is just the, in this case, just atmospheric pressure being applied to piston two. This rho G D term Remember, it's from P0 down to the point that we're studying. So P0 is being applied on piston two, and the point that we're studying is here along the purple line. So that D distance is actually this H value that I had marked. So really this D is H. And then finally, this last term, F2 over A2, that's just the force of the car pushing down on the area of the piston. Now I did say that P1 and P2 are equal to one another, so I'm gonna go ahead and set these two equations equal to each other, and then we can actually solve for F2 in terms of rho, P0, A2, A1, and F1. So I'm gonna scroll down just a tiny bit, and I'll say P1 is equal to P2, so on the right side, P0 plus F1 over A1, this is equal to P naught plus rho G D, and D was H, right, the, the height from piston two down to P two, plus F two over A two. Now, you can actually see that P naught and P naught cancel out because they are constant, so we're left with F one over A one is equal to rho G H plus F two over A two. Now remember, we're trying to solve for F2. We're trying to figure out what that counteracting force is on piston two in terms of F1, A1, and A2. 
So what I can do is I can subtract rho gh from both sides and we're left with f1 over a1 minus rho gh is equal to f2 over a2. Now if we multiply both sides of the equation by a2, then we are left with f1, which is a2 over a1 minus rho gh times a2, and that is equal to f2. Okay, awesome. So we figured out what f2 was in terms of f1, a1, a2, and of course rho gh. So whenever we have hydraulic systems like this or a hydraulic lift that is of this type of a system where you have this larger piston on the right, this smaller piston on the left, you can apply a relatively small force and Pascal's principle is gonna increase the pressure along all of these inner walls of this fluid and that will result in a larger force that gets to push piston two up. The force that's pushing piston two up is essentially what F2 is. So in this case, just the force of the car pushing down in the piston, it's gonna be counteracted by this F2 force that we found here. Now that's pretty cool. So I want to draw your attention to one more scenario and that's, it'll help explain what this force multiplication factor is. But let's assume for a second that piston two and piston one were roughly at the same height and then that status or that system was in static equilibrium. So the car wasn't moving up or down. So in other words, let's assume H is very, very, very small. Now, what that does is it allows us to actually neglect this term right here because if h is basically zero, then this term is gonna go to basically zero. So what we're gonna be left with is really force two is equal to force one times area two over area one. Now, this term right here, this a two over a one, you can see is the ratio between the larger piston and the smaller piston. And this term right here is what we call our force multiplication factor. So in other words, we can multiply F1 times this force multiplication factor, and that gives us what F2 is. And in this case, if A2 is larger than A1, then you can see that if we multiplied some small value of F1 by something that's greater than one, then that's gonna amplify the force being applied to piston two. So really this force multiplication factor is a way to amplify a small force to be able to do a lot of work, a lot more work and provide a greater force against piston two. And really that's because of Pascal's principles, that's because of the study of hydraulic systems, but I think that's pretty cool, right? You can apply a small force, multiply it by some factor and that gives you F2 in the case that H is, you know, very, very small or very negligible.